I'm Chris Hedges. Uh, I'm a writer. I write books. Uh, I spent 20 years overseas as a war correspondent. Came back and realized that uh, corporations had carried out a coup d'etat in my country. Uh, and I've been fighting back, although not as effectively as you guys. <laughs> well, I've covered movements. I've covered all of the revolutions in Eastern Europe. I covered the street demonstrations that brought down Milosevic. I've covered the, both of the Palestinian intifadas. And uh, once movements like this start and articulate a fundamental truth about the society that they live in uh, and uh, expose the repression, the mendacity, the corruption, and the decay of the structures of power, uh, then they have a kind of centrifugal force. You never know where they're going. Uh, you know, I, I was with the leaders of the uh, movement, the opposition movement in East Germany in Leipzig on the afternoon of November 9th, 1989, and they said that perhaps within a year there would be free passage back and forth across the Berlin Wall. In a few hours, the Berlin Wall didn't exist. What happens is, in all of these movements, this was true in Prague as well, is that the foot soldiers of the elite, the blue uniform police, uh, the mechanisms of control, uh, finally don't want to impede the movement. And at that point, uh, the power elite is left defenseless. So where is it going? No one knows, even the people most uh, intimately involved in the organization don't know. Uh, they ha this, all of these movements uh, take on a kind of life and color uh, that uh, is in some ways finally mysterious. Um, the only thing I can say, having been in the middle of similar movements, is that this one is, is real. And, um, and this one could take them all down. You had to advise well, let me first say I learn a lot more from the people who are occupying than, uh, I mean, I've, I, my critique of the corporate state, I think, coalesces with the critique that many people in Occupy Wall Street have, but I never wrote in any of my books about how to bring them down. This whole uh, non-hierarchical structure is really brilliant. And I didn't have a clue. I didn't have a clue. Um, the, because they can't, they can't destroy the movement like that. The, the fact that you rotate people through positions of leadership, and the fact that you're completely transparent, the fact that you realize that, uh, you, you know, you've clearly been provoked. I mean, Anthony Bologna was, try, I think, trying to provoke people in that crowd because they want windows smashed. What, they know how to handle that. They don't know how to handle this. This is driving them insane. And the fact is that I can guarantee you that huge segments of those blue uniform police sympathize with everything that you're doing. And that is the way you can, you can shatter the manacles of control uh, that, that have been placed on the country by the corporate state. Uh, and that's what, that's what scares them. I mean, the most aggressive figures in the crowds are these white-shirted assholes. Um, and, uh, I mean, okay, you, you remember, always remember that you only have to deal with them, you know, a, once in a while. These poor uniformed cops got to deal with them every day. Uh, I think the movement's really, 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 really smart, really astute, and um, uh, I don't really think I have much to teach it at all. I don't think there's any danger of this movement being uh, seduced or co-opted by MoveOn.org, which is a reprehensible organization, or the Democratic Party or anyone else, or the Teamsters. The fact is, what you've done what they have not done, which is fight back. And because you've fought back, they've been exposed for who they are, i.e. the leaders of this group. That's why they're running to you and attempting to restore what little shredded credibility they have left. You know, I'm a visitor, I come and go, but I don't sense that there's any danger. I, I think the, the, the sort of political consciousness of this group is so high uh, that uh, um, they see through all of these figures who show up at the park. I mean, I was there when uh, Patterson showed up, Charlie Rengel showed up, 
Um, I mean, it's um, it, it, it's uh, it's sort of almost sad in a way, uh, and, and it, because the fact is they have uh, offered nothing, done nothing, except of course mouth this empty rhetoric, uh, this kind of feel your pain language while betraying the very people they purportedly represent. So I don't think there's any danger of this movie being co-opted at all. I think that, that you know, even with the Teamsters, the union bosses, and these union bosses are pulling down five times what the rank and file is pulling down. They've done nothing for unions except basically barter away their benefits and rights. Uh, and in fact, you know, the union bosses have to get down here because otherwise they're going to lose their rank and file. That's why you're seeing groups like Move On or Teamsters coming down here uh, because you do what their leadership has not done, which is stand up. And let me just say something. I wasn't here Friday morning. Um, for me, I got kids. And, um, and, and it's all, it's not about me anymore. It's about the next generation. It's about my children's generation. And I think my passion for what you're doing, and I would even use the word love, comes from the fact that I, I look at you as fighting on behalf of like my little three-year-old. And when I, on Friday morning, of course I was up to find out what happened, and I did what I do now, which is start crying. God bless you all. <laughs>